Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Medieval 2 Total War Definitive Edition here today on the channel. We're back with Episode 6 of my Stainless Steel SSIP England campaign. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. We are currently 53 turns into the campaign. We've got the entirety of the United Kingdom fully under our control. We're under the reign of King Henry, we have slowly but surely, after uniting the island under one banner, we pushed over into northern France to try and reclaim some of our ancestral homeland. We also even extended further into southern Belgium. We have Gand. Uh, we also have Brittany under our control. And we've pushed into northern Aquitaine. So after those short walls, uh, wars against those rebels, we are now replenishing and repairing. Because recruitment takes so long, we need to rebuild those forces adequately. Okay, nice. So martial law in Aberdeen, in Dublin is no more. Right, so we need to... Man, that was so long ago. <laughs> it was a couple years that we took that, but we are still... Now, just trying to bring those territories properly and fully into the English fold. No wars have really popped up here. We're also putting a bunch of money into construction. Here is the family tree. The Diabolus line is growing quite nicely. King Henry is called the Usurper now. I don't necessarily know why that's changed. Okay, he's now 26. Um, his father, Geoffrey the Righteous, is 45. Wait, opposes the usurper. Okay. Why are all these traits now propping up? Hmm. That's a bit bizarre. We're currently in a civil war. Uh, Reginald married the king's sister of Cornwall. Hopefully we can have some, well, Cornwall king uh, kids. We're going to build some more buildings over here in France and get some recruitment going as well. Oh yeah, here we go. Civil War in England. Anarchy reigns supreme. Oh, it must have popped up before it happened. In England, as a chosen, as a chosen successor of the late king has been overthrown. Oh my god, okay. We're in a full-on civil war. Oh, and I think we've had some territory re rebel. You've got to be kidding me. The young nation may have thought there were few enemies upon the Isle of Britain worth fearing. Oh, no. Um, I don't know how that's exactly going to work. As there isn't a proper in-depth civil war mechanic in medieval. Okay, nothing there. Cardinal report. Yikes. Oh, okay. So this is why it's happened. Interesting. So, Edmund Plantagenet. So, who... Oh, so, I guess there's, like, certain backers of the king. How do I resolve this civil war? Maybe I need that territory. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So, unfortunately, Dunedin has rebuilt. Oh, that's just such annoying. And same in Dublin as well. We just got rid of that, um, martial law. Okay. Well, we've got a small garrison here, so we can start sieging. Hmm. We might need to get a general to go over there and command. Thankfully... Uh, is it Edward, dear boss? So, not everyone supports the king, which is interesting. Um, one of the king's brothers has come of age. So, let's move him back to Brittany. Edmund Plantagenet. So, he actually opposes his brother. Interesting. Alright. Still slowly but surely building up our military forces. They didn't, like, fully rebel. That would have been kind of sensible and realistic conspiracy opposes the usurper. Wow, a lot of the king's <laughs> brothers and brothers-in-law. What about Edward? Doesn't say. Eustace is a conspirator. Baldwin opposes King Henry. Prince Stephen, I imagine, thinks he should be king. All right, we're currently sieging out Dublin. Um, it's only four turns until they surrender now anyway. So we might just try and siege them out fully. Um, back up in the north. I don't think we need any reinforcements. Uh, Edward Diabolus, second-born son of S Prince Stephen. 
who wants to be king, is now in charge to take it. Uh, France are trying to get Potiers back under their control. Alright, welcome to the top of the turn. Um, I think, even though it's three turns until surrender, we're probably going to have to play this one. Oh, 500 inside. We do outnumber them slightly, but seeing as they don't have a general, we should be okay. Right, back on the fields of Scotland again. Facing some Scottish-backed separatists. As we try and deal with our first English civil war. I did read someone in the comments that they were saying, is, oh, they have a pretty hard time as England, as there's constant civil wars. I did read and remember that comment when all this civil war stuff now has popped up. I wonder how you correct it. I'm assuming we need to get all of Aquitaine under our control. Damn. That's annoying. We've only had two kings in this series. With the family tree split, it is turning very Crusader Kings. The battering ram is in place. It will not be long before our enemy's defenses fall. The battering ram has done its work. Right, the battering ram has made its way up to the reinforced gates. Seems like the rebels are making a defensive position all the way back. Now we do have to be a little bit careful here because they do have crossbowmen. The Lord is with us today. And they were an absolute pain in my side earlier in the series when we were facing the Scots. We might just need to close the distance and charge on in here. Having those crossbow levies absolutely ping us and pin us with bolts is probably not the play. We might need to put Edward into the fray here. We will be risking him, but cycle charging is one of our best bet. I just wish that some of the general's bodyguard had more knights. But I guess it's kind of sensible and realistic. And nerfing heavy cavalry ability. Yeah, particularly targeting those crossbows will be better. Yikes, we've only just stabilized the UK and are now investing into some of that forward French territory. I was putting so much of my construction funds into England because it's pretty hard for an enemy faction to penetrate deep into the UK and England. Like, I don't think York's going to get attacked anytime soon. Or hell, even Lincoln. We've got a really nice buffer zone. Separated by a sea in northern France now. Alright. Just need to wait just a little bit longer. And we'll have Dunedin back... Under our control, nice. By God's will, we have triumphed. <coughs> oh my God! Bless me. I was out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, that's annoying that they're unhappy. Because mm, I can't um sack or execute. I'm just gonna have to occupy. Mm, some of that infantry isn't the best. We might have to ferry more. Soldiers up potentially. Oh, actually, you know what? I could get some mercenaries for the time yes, being. Okay. Um, I'm going to move you back to England, Edmund. Now, what is 
the best place for you to go. Probably Lincoln. I only really want generals with active armies in France because it's still a little bit dangerous having heaps of family members on the continent. Alright, still building up our military position in Gand. It's just a little bit exposed. Um, where are our diplomats? Actually, you know what? I got an idea. I found this French diplomat here as I was moving my diplomat back. Maybe I'll try and get some relations with them, because we're actually, like, not the best. I just want to try and increase my relations, because they have soured over recent years. Um, I am willing to give them Gand for Angers back. Because I need that settlement to hit my victory conditions, or otherwise we're just going to have to take it by force. Military access, we'll give them Gand, they'll trade us Angers. And we'll give them like 2,000. What are they going to say? No, nah, they're not interested. Damn. We've been allies with them for like 53 turns. Oh my god, our relationship's even soured to so-so. Because -so. Uh, we are building up here. There's no more rebel territory for me to take here. Uh, maybe um, like in the Netherlands, but then we're very much overextending, I think. Uh, Edmund, now moving back to Lincoln, has managed to caught one of the Lincoln noble women, Evangelita Frampton. Uh, sure, let's marry him off. I would rather marry into other noble houses, but that's okay. Oh wait, Owen of Cornwall has been born. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, the king has a nephew now. Nice, so the Cornwall line will live on. Reginald the farmer. A 30-year gover governor of Bristol. <laughs> That's so funny. That's cool. All right, back over in the UK now. I think we're going to have to manually play this battle in Dublin now. We'll give it one more turn, and then I think we'll play it. Actually, you know what? Maybe I should move a general over there. <gasps> no way. Oh, you've got to be kidding me, man. The, enemy has surprised <gasps> us. the French have surprised attacked us. Oh, no. They, they have moved two full attack. stacks they into southern Belgium. Walls. The French-speaking territory that they have a claim to. And they're actually striking Normandy. Yikes. We haven't even... We're in a full-blown civil war. And... The French are going to take advantage. Oh, wow. This is massive. Maybe negotiating with them was not the best idea. And now we're getting attacked during the end turn phase. Oh, we might not be able to get a general over there then. Um, well, we're going to have to manually fight this one. Whoa, four units of archers. That's annoying. And then we're going to have to deal with the consequences of what the French have done. As if they've done that. As if they've backstabbed me and surprised attacked me. Luckily, I have so many military forces over there in France. Like, we just didn't need them. But, is it justified? We have kind of penned them on in. I was willing to negotiate, but I guess... Looking diplomatically in the grand scheme of things, fighting a defensive alliance is... Probably more acceptable. Ooh, this is going to be tough. I don't know if we can win this. It's just going to take uh, our best unit infrastructure and recruitment is actually back in England. We're going to have to ferry it on over to northern France. Oh, this is going to be so tough. Particularly, we're in a full-blown civil war. Oh my god, did we just get rid of the general there? What the hell? Yikes. Alright, they're actually charging it against us, which is interesting. I can't see anything happening 
Right, well, how are we going to deal with the French situation? Now I can just sort of have a think and a breather. We should be able to win this. Once we've stabilised Ireland. And Scotland. The thing is, we've got to be careful because we don't want to be doing too many offensive actions. Because the other factions already hate us. Maybe we expanded too quickly. Maybe that's what it is. I feel like we're only taking rebel territory, though. Maybe it's inevitable. Man, I was willing to negotiate with them as well. Well, now we have an opportunity to retake our old castle in Angers back. The only problem is, is uh, Spain on the border. We do need Bordeaux at some point, so we might have to take it by force. Okay, so we've reoccupied Dublin. We have looted the enemy camp. I'm sure, like, diplomatically, them attacking us isn't going to be that strong. Like, it's going to hamper them quite a bit. Wow, we still got poor relations with France, the HRE, and the Danes. Interesting. We're still at war with... We're still allied with uh, the Papal See. Yikes. Um, this is bad. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Alright, so I think we start off with just putting Dublin on a low tax right. I'm going to move over Eustace, Diabolus, to go help him govern the island. So he was in Wales, but I think because of that rebellion there. Um... Prince Almery, 59. So the prince has marched out from Paris. He's quite old. And Stefan and his firstborn son, Baldwin, is under siege. I think... So Gregory's actually in the south. I kind of don't want to leave this castle. But they've left Angers so weak. Maybe they moved their forces back towards Paris. Maybe Or maybe some of the force joined the attack. Look, you know what? Unless it's a bait, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move my smaller army there. Uh, we need our diplomats over here big time. Maybe we need to negotiate with the Holy Roman Empire. Try and get them involved. I'm sure some of that Germanic slash French speaking territory along the Rhine and Lorraine region. They'd want to help. Thankfully, I moved Edmund back. <laughs> The king's um, brother. Because he could have been a little bit... Dead. <laughs> if he stayed in uh, France. Oh, God, as if they did that. I'm surprised that they backstabbed me. It's because our relations got so low, I think. Um... Maybe I do cancel some of this. Just so I can get money, so I can get some negotiations, maybe. Yes, my lord. Like, for example... Yes, sire. If I negotiate... Oh, you're in range. Let's do that, then. So, map information. I want an alliance, if I can. Frederick. He might be a... Main governor. An alliance for 6,000 plus... Men. Just rejected. Okay. Ideally, we want to try and get them involved and help out in this war. Because that would be massive. The HRE and England always did have a... ...solid alliance historically. And some marital ties, particularly with some of the Germanic houses. Let's up this. The tribute can sometimes push it over the line because you, you can kind of be a little bit cheeky and cancel it. Yeah, very weak but deceitful. Mm. I wonder if it's our king. Maybe our king's just a bit shit. Right, let's move these two units from Brittany to at least besiege Angers. It's only going to take one turn for them to create some siege equipment. And what I'll do is if it gets built and we don't drag out an army, we might commit... Gregory Plantagenet, the king's father, into the field. Um, for now, you don't seem to lose, like, crazy attrition sitting and fighting. Like, I could march out against Prince 
Ormery of France, but I might just allow them to attack me during the end turn, or maybe just let them attack me. Our economy will go down quite a bit, but I, I kind of want to treat this as a defensive war. I don't want to be like too aggressive and offensive, but we'll see. We'll see really what happens when France has their turn. Oh, they skipped it, so they're going to siege out a turn in Normandy and Gand. But this could be catastrophic. We could lose the prince. It might actually help our civil war issues. No, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, I think that's Spain. I think the king, the kingdom of Castile and Leon just attacked me. Y what? We're getting absolutely ganged up on. What is happening? Still got a pretty decent amount of money. And the Pope wants to cease hostilities. I'll get out of here with that. <gasps> I actually think the Pope's French. Oh, he is too. Oh, that is such a conflict of interest. So they're telling me I can't retake my own settlement of Angers because will be excommunicated otherwise. Oh, we're going to have to withdraw. That is a massive conflict of interest. Why do we just get so much money then? And we're at war with Spain. Oh no, this is really bad. We might actually lose all of our northern French territory if we're not careful here. So, Angers can't get taken. We have to wait seven turns before we... We can't even do any offensive action anyway. Yeah, we need to get the HRE involved. I cannot do that, sire. Because they are so close. I guess we just got to keep ending the turn. Recruiting and repairing and uh, just wait until the French attack and re we just react from that. Alright, so they're going to attack Normandy. Oh wow, this is make or break. The Battle of the Princes. The Marshal, the Duke of Orleans, 59 years of age. Wants to eventually be king someday. One to one. We outnumber them. Here we go. Massive battle here today. France v. England. The, f the Hundred Years' War is about to begin. All right, now thankfully this is a huge city, and it's pretty good, so we're just going to have to set up defensive positions. Now, we probably have numerical supremacy on them, but we certainly do not have the unit quality. They have far better and numerous mounted swordsmen, all plaited up in armor and boiled leathers. Yeah, they actually have, like, proper knights. Yikes. But guess what? That's not going to do much about... The vast amount of arrow towers and arches we have. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. This is why um, the SSHIP mod is so sensible and historically realistic. We took all the UK, brought it under our control. We pushed and into northern France. I think it's because we took so much of their bordering territory. Like, we extended our border so much. And moved so many forces on there. They kind of felt pinned and boxed in. I'm surprised they didn't actually take Brittany or Gand or even Portier. I don't know what they were sort of doing. Maybe, to be fair, they could have a massive eastern French kingdom. Like, they could be pretty far into northern Italy or I don't know, southern France. That would be my guess. <laughs> Unless they just, like, threw. Yeah, look at this. They have a bunch of light men at arms. They look so good. The Axe Militia we should be able to deal with. Ooh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to win this one. This is going to be so, so close. But here we go. This could be make or break. It's a pretty um, solid strategy. I haven't played a defensive medieval siege in so, so long. <laughs> I love it that the AI took the initiative to do a surprise attack. It's not going to be too popular within Christendom. They do risk excommunication in doing this, but they do have the ear of the Pope if they are successful. I can't believe. That is so, so funny. That's actually so realistic that a French Pope gets voted in. Two of our settlements are under siege. We... Right, okay. We're going to go take a castle. And the Pope goes, no, you can't take that castle. And it's like, well, we need that. It's a military objective for us. 
but they say no. So, pff, I don't know. We basically can only fight defensively, but then we might be able to sue for peace. So, we might need to move the archers off these walls as well. We'll let them get some shots, but if they start getting engaged into melee combat, it might be sensible just to move them. Man, we are not favoured to win this one whatsoever. But here they come. The French are now surging on over. But if we lose Normandy here, not only do we lose a potential king in Stefan Diabolos, but we also lose our largest, our strongest, our 56-turn castle that we've been holding and developing. God knows what the French are going to do with them. And it divides the kingdom up. Like, it actually might be a point... I don't know, do we move back? Do we retreat? This is like a flashpoint in the campaign. If we can win these battles, we might be able to stay in France a little bit longer. If we lose, this could set us back to England. And then we have to go back over here and fight. Ugh, that's why I was so open to actually give up Gand. Because those far... Eastern, sorry, Western French territory in and around that Brittany and Potier region and kind of is e there's like four settlements in quite um, a dense condensed fashion like over here protecting Gand is just like so far away also we haven't even calculated what the damn French are going to do I can't, oh, sorry, the Spanish are going to do I can't believe that I think we'll focus on the French but I guess we could move into Bordeaux now. I can't believe they took that. The Spanish. Always looking to capitalize on a crisis. Jeez. <laughs> Our men are winning okay. The save us. The enemy it's a little bit hard to see who's exactly winning here. Particularly with the balance of power not changing. Hmm. Alright. Now that I pulled the archers off the walls, it's actually better to just try and hit this cluster and those units on the walls. We can get a really good angle. Alright, this is what we want. This is good. We're doing a lot better on some portion of the walls. We should have a bonus fighting. But in the gateway, surrounding them with spears from multiple angles, multiple vectors of attack. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash Should be able to pin them down. I just hope they throw in their jet. They are throwing everyone through that gateway. Ugh. And the French prince is leading from the front. Oh, they're starting to get shaken now. Ooh. I'm so nervous. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Oh, dude, they've capitulated. Bro. The trash tear spear the trash tear spearmen prevail. We have too many archers. Could do with more. No, I lost 35%. The 
battle is very much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, no, we're doing it. Yes, I can see the balance of power changing. This is our home. Normandy is our land. Get out of here. Bro, I love the stakes, though. Two princes from two respected dynasties. Hell, probably cousins. <laughs> Okay. Just have to be careful when we start giving out attack orders here now. I feel like sitting in this defensive stance we've used as much as we could. Okay, we still haven't got rid of the prince. Where is he? Now we've got a massive opportunity to deal with. If we, we I think we're going to win this now. I can't see them coming back from this, even though we're pretty exhausted. 47-63, and there's mass routes happening on several sections of the wall and the main gateway. Uh, the amount of people we're going to capture, what do we do? We can't release them. We're going to have to try and ransom them, but they might not be able to afford them. We'll see. Okay, some of them have recovered. We're just trying to surge on this last little bit now. Our men are winning the battle. Good tidings. The enemy general lies dead. We've nice. There we go. We got him. I'm pretty sure it was him. Yes, Prince Omri is no more. We've managed to throw back the first French attack. And hopefully it's the first of many more to come. Oh my god, this is going to be a Pyrrhic victory. We'll continue and try and run down as many of them as we can. But Stefan Diabolos, the crown prince, a man who thinks he should be king, has now defended Normandy valiantly. As the king sits back in England. <laughs> And the other years, like a split between two factions. Look at these two families. It's kind of nice. Wow. What an absolute throw. I wonder if it was the, uh, the French king's plan or... The prince's. But this is a catastrophic defeat for the French. One full stack down. One more to go in the active field. There might be another one somewhere else that I can't see in the fog of war. We've got roughly the same territory as them. So. I'm sure they've probably got a similar army size. Just trying to gobble up as many of them as we can. Come on. Add them all up. Add all those units up to that ransom list. That's what we want. Alright. Uh, let's probably just end that one there. Heroic victory. 1,000 lost. Only 155 remaining. And importantly, we have the French prince under our control. The souls of the emperors and the cobblers are east in the same mound. What? Oh no! What? Ah, oh, this is driving me nuts. These game crashes. So we've had to redo this battle again. They will accept the ransom, but um, because we had to redo it, unfortunately, we don't have Prince Armory 
um, to ransom, or he didn't die. He's just fled back. Oh, that frustrates me so much. I don't know what it is, man. The game crashes are getting worse. They were so stable in the campaign. Maybe because it's just going on. I feel like this is more unstable than vanilla, and I don't know what it is. What do you guys reckon? What's the main problem for game crashes? Also, it could just be me running OBS and other like, audio recording stuff. Maybe that doesn't help. But anyway, unfortunately on that note, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed episode 6 of the Medieval 2 Total War Definitive Edition. Stainless Steel SSH IP England campaign. Stay tuned for episode 7 coming out the exact same time tomorrow. And it's going to be super exciting now. Over the last couple of episodes, we've been fighting a small major faction in Scotland and taking rebel territory. But now, we are now fully in a land war on the European continent. The French and the English are battling it out. The 100 Years War has just begun. All right. Stay tuned, guys. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.